Can the AI-driven dating apps of the future help save the world from depopulation, David? Japan's trying to do something right now. We believe that government-run dating apps can save the future of the human civilization. We got to talk about this. This is going viral right now. The Tokyo government launched a dating app in hopes of creating more babies. And they already discounted beer. They had in-person matchmaking. Now they're investing millions of dollars into a government-sanctioned dating app where you have to disclose your real age and your real income in your real intentions. Oh my goodness. All right, everybody. So in this video, we're going to be actually talking about uh, a lot of perspectives on the depopulation, some possible solutions for just in general of the world, because Japan is actually not the only country going through this. Although Japan is one of the more advanced countries whose government has now made it an official issue that uh, the birth rate is low. So they're like, yo, listen, we got to have more babies in Japan. And that's the thing. J America hasn't even said that yet. Right. It is an official war on depopulation. Right. It's an official war on not having marriages and babies. So anyways, guys, please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. Check out smalasauce.com at smalasauce.com. It's delicious. You know, some governments around the world are having a war on obesity right now. Right. And so a lot of, I mean, a lot of governments are at war with other countries but uh, japan's war is against not having babies because people are just not interested we've talked about this on the channel before if you're right. familiar with japan you you probably kind of understand why it's like late stage capitalism first world country problems uh you know people are women's outpriced. rights women's rights people are outpriced to the city they're not uh inspired to raise kids uh they're too caught up in hobbies and they're just there's no hope right elon is supporting it um because you know elon is a big anti-depopulation guy and we're going to get into that later. But oh, real Elon be pumping out the kids. Yeah, yeah, Let's yeah, just yeah. say that. Real quick, Andrew, bullish or bearish just on this Tokyo Tinder or a <laughs> Ginder, I guess we could call it, government Tinder. All right, so it is more based around marriage, so it's not Tinder. Maybe it's more uh, coffee meets bagel. But uh, I would say uh, I am somewhat bullish in the fact that I'm hopeful because I think that this is just going to be taking the place of the old matchmaker uh, situation that people used to have. So remember, like obviously some cultures and you know, South is, I know some South Asians whose parents were in arranged marriages or their parents were met by each other with like a matchmaker, right? So if the app can actually single out people who actually want marriages and are actually serious about things, I think it can do damage. I think it can help, but also it's going to help if some high profile people find their mate through this. So if they got some Japanese celebrities who you know, our success stories, they're going to need to promote those because that's going to help everybody else be inspired. Like, oh my gosh, even like uh, Somani, uh, Somenani uh, found his love through it, you know? Uh, that's funny. I will say this. The fact that you have to get a government like voice over phone interview to enter the app, it kind of makes me question who is ultimately going to enter it and what's the talent pool going to look like? Is it going to look like Mad TV's lowered expectations? Nah, though? see, 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 you're bearish in the fact that you think the, the, the barriers to entry are so high so it's going to be worse for the app. But I think that in a way, that means it's going to be more successful at a percentage basis. Right, right. Because if you just rely on the swipey swipe Tinder apps... Not that many people getting married off those. Right, right. Um, I will say this. They need to provide an incentive for people who get married off of the app, whether that's like free annulments if it doesn't work out, maybe access to a certain child index fund or mm. ETF. Basically, what I'm saying is they need to like reward people for getting married off the app like a game show. Oh, oh. what about if you have a kid, once your kid is born, they automatically have a small index fund from the government oh. or like some type of small fund that is already growing so you don't have to do it for them. I was made on Ginda and because of that, my schooling was free. Yeah, sort of like some super social, uh, what is it, social security kind of thing? Yeah. Is that what Yo, it If you were matched on the government app, in an effort to stop depopulation of Japan, then you should get some rewards, at least free diapers or something. Yeah. But, but you know, here's the interesting thing. I think Japan's having, and South Korea, having an incredibly low birth rate, what, 1.2 and 0 0.8 respectively. You need 2.25, by the way, to actually have a valid replacement rate. How can it only be because of safety? Because, you know, everybody's like, the West isn't safe anymore. But Japan is one of 
the safest, if not the safest country in the entire world. Right, I don't think safety is the problem. For I don't think any Japanese people are like, oh, you know, I don't want to raise any kids in this crazy country. <laughs> right. Um, Andrew, is it only about money and work life? Because Japan and South Korea have incredibly low birth rates. China also has a really low birth rate. Mm. And so does Russia is, is declining. But those are countries are considered much lower GDP per capita than South Korea and Japan. Right, right, right. It just seems like your life in Japan or South Korea, and particularly Japan, is so good. Why wouldn't you have more kids? Right. Is it only about equality? Because Canada also has an incredibly low birth rate on the charts, and Canada probably arguably has more equality than America does. Yeah, yeah. I think it's... There's a lot of reasons. We'll get into it. Anyway... Point number one, Andrew, here are different perspectives on depopulation. So we, we're getting out of the micro into the macro bird's eye view here. Um, a lot of people are saying that people like Elon and billionaires, Andrew, they just want more people to be productive in the society so they can get richer for their companies that employ a bunch of people. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's part of it. But I also think Elon is a very big picture macro guy thinker. So I think there's multiple incentives for him. Ultimately, he does understand the numbers and the math behind it. You need more people in this world and you need more good families, educated people to make babies as well as everybody else make babies. Right. So you're saying it's not just a, I need more meat for the meat grinder situation. Ah, that's, a, that's a popular saying in China. Yeah, they want more meat for the meat grinder. I think some people think like that. Uh, point number two. Some people are saying it's not about production, especially in America. It's all about consumption. Because if you understand the way the U.S. reserve currency goes, Andrew, if everybody has to buy everything in the world, like trade with each other, even two non-American countries in dollars, people, dollars have to be in demand to keep the price of dollars high while America prints a bunch of dollars to keep America rich. But that must mean that there's a lot of internal domestic consumption for U.S. dollars within the U.S. borders as well. Right. So I think the thing is about the whole workforce and the buyer thing. Yes, you do need consumers and AI is not a consumer. If anything, AI robots will be workers, right? They will be able to add to the, the producers. workforce. But they will be cutting down the producers that are human. Right. So, but you still need consumers that are human. I, I think that's part of it. But also you have to think about it this way. If you have an aging population and you don't have a younger generation to take care of them, Unless the robots do it. Now, maybe if the robots do it, then technically you don't need as many people, right? Because then some of these industries, like who cares if the demand for like fast fashion goes down worldwide for a little bit? Maybe that's not a bad thing. You know what I mean? But it'll probably go up. But maybe like, I, I would say like truck drivers and stuff, it's all going to go away. Right. But like I'm delivery saying, like, drivers. if there's less people buying fashion, is that a big deal? For the world. I mean, some of those things are going to shut down. That's going to suck for those companies. But ultimately, on a macro, macro, is it that terrible? Right. Uh, point number three, Andrew, a lot of people are saying, I think the world's going to be better with less people because the GDP-based GDP, GDP based economic model is from the old days. Uh, and you just don't need the whole engine to be, like, growing forever for. Like, basically, they're saying, yes, what Elon and everybody's saying about prosperity with more people is true, but only it was true 30 years ago. You're saying we don't need this much stuff? You're saying we don't need this many houses? You're saying we don't need these many boats and shoes? Well, there's a theory that in the future, most people won't own anything, but they'll be happy because they'll have everything given to them. Oh, have everything, but not own it. Yeah. Huh. Also, I really think ultimately, like you said earlier, the robots and the AI, is it really going to deliver? Is a robot really going to caretake for like people over 80, 90 years old? Like, can a robot really do it? Because right now I just see him delivering more fatty beef slices at hot pot restaurants. But they Why? can deliver the medicine. <laughs> <laughs> How fast are we moving? Uh, point number four, um, somebody was saying that, you know, uh, stop forcing people to have kids they don't want. You can tell by the way they raise them, they either end up unhappy or criminals or just a bunch of un unwanted outcomes for everybody. <laughs> Dude, that's a dark comment, but I mean, I guess I see what they're saying because I guess if there's this many bad kids in the world... You mean already? Then, yeah, if there's this many bad kids, then doesn't it show that parents already don't want kids? I guess, I don't know. You let me know in the comments down below. Well, I think that, yeah, we, we got to get into another comment <laughs> after this. But yeah, here's the counterpoint. Somebody said, no, if you guys understand economics, countries may descend into Mad Max or overseas wars anyway if the economy falls apart. So this is like, well, damned if you do, damned if you don't. Both, uh, you know, 
extrapolations. Point number five, Andrew, it's about cost, divorce, desire for fun, and pressure. Basically, a lot of parents just don't want to deal with all the above, whether it's the cost or maybe everybody knows every potential negative outcome and nobody, like everybody went to school with somebody and this is messed up to say, but everybody went to school with somebody with kids who either got killed in car crashes, committed suicide, freak accidents, drowning after football practice in the lake, the muscles lock up, whatever. Like I'm saying, nobody wants to be, we all know those stories through the media or through our real lives. Nobody wants to have that happen to their kids. Yeah, you know, uh, I had this ex-girlfriend who, very educated, went to a really good school, went to Ivy League, and then she was saying this about kids and it kind of like caught me off guard. Uh, it's not the reason why we broke up. But anyways, she was like, I don't know if I want to bring kids into this world. I was like, but you're, I was like, in my head, I was like, you're from a decent family. You went to a really good college. You're living in New York City. How could you say that? If you say that, if you're saying you don't want to bring a kid into this world, then what about those people with a lot less? They really shouldn't be bringing kids in this world. So I was like, dang, if like the educated groups are saying that and people feel that way, then there's a lot of fear in the world about the kids that you have, right? Like you got to let alone fear for your dog running across the street. You got to fear for your kid getting kidnapped. You want to fear for your kid getting sick. You got to fear for your kid not achieving what you want them to be, not being that pro athlete, not going to that college. Oh, and then you got to pay for the college. You don't know if you're going to be able to pay for your kids schooling as much as your parents paid for your schooling, right? Do you think there's just too much information out there? Like in a way, like people know too much and now they're too terrified, but the people who know less are less terrified, even if their risk exposures theoretically are higher. You mean in some way people are over knowledged? Overexposed. Like, yeah, they're overexposed to all the knowledge and the fears of the world. So now they're just scared. Yeah, yeah. that is called, uh, uh, you're just like, in paralysis because well, that, you're like, oh my gosh, I know too much of what can happen. Well, that was a, that movie Idiocracy where the parents are like, well, you know, I can't have a child and let them play on the jungle gym because they, they fall down and scratch themselves on a rusty piece of metal. There's flesh eating bacteria. The, there's a one in 10 million chance they'll get the rust, uh, flesh eating bacteria from the rust on the playground. No playgrounds. Uh, point number six, it's only people in a lot of first world developed economies that are worrying about these issues because they are in late, late, late stage capitalism. If you take a look at the map of global fertility rates, obviously uh, pretty much the only ones that are soaring Middle East, Africa, and some parts of Latin America. Mm. Um, point number seven, nobody needs each other anymore like we did in the past. We are the furthest at the furthest point from the communal village-like structure of life that humans lived for 5 million years prior let the chips fall how they may. Mm. Does it feel like it? I enter. Is this the end of the road for the human civilization? We had a good 5 million year run. Just don't need each other anymore. Mm. Going with the cyborgs. I don't know. Can these dating apps save depopulation? Can anything save depopulation? What if you lower the cost for everybody? I don't know. You got to give rewards to parents who have kids. Like, but like, I guess they do already, but not like, not like the way they're doing it now. I don't know, man. Dude, we need to, cha we have to champion, I guess, people with kids, right? I don't know. You guys let me know what, what you guys think in the comment section below, or should the cards just fall how they may? I'll say this, uh, kudos to the Japanese government, but it's probably too little too late. It probably can have an impact, but let's just say, for example, there's a 100% pie chart. It probably can impact at 5 10% at most. What do you think about depopulation, guys? Let us know in the comments down below. Is it something you really fear? Are there actual solutions? What are you doing about it? Maybe you're shrinking your worldview and you're like, listen, I can't think about all the dangers, man. I'm just trying to raise this happy kid, and I'm just trying to raise him strong and happy, and that's all I want. Anyways, let us know in the comments down below. And until next time, we out. Peace.